We know from Ms. Mehta's question that most of the people here are students. And I would imagine that most of the other people who are here have also graduated from a university or college. Tonight is not about you. Tonight is about all the rest of the people out there who haven't had those opportunities. Tonight is about the gap in education, in higher education in this country. Ms. Mehta referred to the 70%. That gap is even bigger when you look at the number of people who are college age and the number of people who actually go to university. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to lay out a vision for actually educating 10 crore Indians at a higher education level. We're going to look at what China is doing in higher education. We're going to look at what India is doing in higher education. We're going to look at why it matters. Then we're going to talk about a new higher education model for India. And then we're going to talk about making it happen, because we all know that ideas are cheap. It's execution that works. It's execution that matters. The bar on the left is the number of people who are currently enrolled in higher education in this country. Less than two crore. The bar on the right is the number of university-aged people in this country. 12 crore. The gap in the middle, 10 crore, are the number of people who could be going to university. They're at the right age, but India can't accommodate them. Or maybe their families don't want them to because they'd rather work than work on the farm. So we're going to talk tonight about how we can address that gap in the middle. Let's look at what China is doing. The blue bar is 1990, the red bar is 2000. In both of those years, India was ahead of China in gross enrollment percentage in higher education. The green bar is 2010. Now China's ahead. China is kicking your butt in university education. How are they doing it? They're spending much more, a threefold increase in the amount of money allocated to higher education. Now they spend 1.5% of Chinese GDP. They've doubled the number of institutes of higher education in a period of six years. They've increased enrollment more than fivefold. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the greatest increase in university enrollment in the history of mankind. And now, there are more university students in China than in any other country. What's India doing? Why does it matter? It's very simple. University enrollment is a leading indicator of economic growth. I think we would all say that sounds reasonable and intuitive, but when you look at the statistics, you can prove it. In the case of Japan in the 1970s and Korea in the 1980s, growth spurts in both countries lagged higher education enrollment spurts by between five and ten years. And the work that China's been doing in the last decade is going to pay off for them. And what's India been doing? Not too much. So we need a game changer. We need a new approach for India. Fortunately, there is good news. We've got universities in the United States who started something called EDX. And EDX is a revolution in higher education. Started by Harvard and MIT, they decided they're not just going to educate the people who can pay $50,000 to go to those institutions. They're looking at their mandate as educating the world. So they decide to put their content online for free. They have an open source platform and they have tools that allow interactive learning with their content. And by the way, it's not just MIT and Harvard. Only over 200 universities in the United States have expressed an interest in joining their program and in putting their content online for free. What is the course requirement? A computer and an internet connection. And by the way, you don't even need a permanent internet connection. You can download the tutorials and do it on your own. MIT's first course, 150,000 people signed up for it from 160 countries. The entrepreneurs here like to talk about scalability. 
That's scalability. What does it mean for India? It means you don't have to go out and build big universities and actually create your own education content. There's world-class content sitting there for free. It means the university education can be unbundled. You can take one course from Harvard, one from MIT, one from Princeton, one from Yale, one from Berkeley, whatever you want, you can pick and choose. You don't have to sit in front of a professor at this university for four years and take what they say you should know. You can choose. So forget the 12th five-year plan. India should build new universities in a new model around free online content. That means India moving away from the old model where the university has been the content developer and distributor, moving from that model to a new model where they insource the content and they do value-added distribution. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. Old model, students learn the unique content taught, developed and taught on site. New model, the content's not unique, but it's world class and it can be taught remotely. Old model, expensive faculty. New model, cheaper faculty who can help the students learn what's being, the, the content that's being developed and brought online. You don't need a Harvard professor here in India to help you understand what the Harvard professor is teaching. You need somebody who can help the student learn what's already being taught. Old, expensive infrastructure, big universities, huge land, new, lower infrastructure costs. Old, non-scalable, new, scalable. Old, the government funds and administers education, new. The government has a role in certifi certifying educational institutions built around this new model and a role in setting standards. And the private sector, to be sure, they have a burgeoning role right now in the current Indian university framework, filling the gaps that the government can't provide for its own people. And the new model, the private sector may have a central role in not only funding these new educational institutions, but administering them and allowing them to scale through new business models. So how do you make it happen? The math is very simple. If by 2030, we build 10,000 of these new small-scale universities built around free content, and you put 1,500 students in each one, then you're educating 1.5 crore each year. And that's how the scale goes up. So by 2030, your annual education levels, 1.5 crore, and you capture your 10 crore students. Now the hard part. How do we do it? This is just a bunch of ideas. How do we make it happen? What can all of you do? What are you going to commit to tonight? And who out there is willing to raise their hand and say, I'm going to start? The future economic growth in this country will depend on what is done today in the higher education sphere. And it doesn't have to end tonight. Get involved. Stay involved. Use social media. We have already started a hashtag on Twitter, 10 core grads. Share ideas, get people motivated, and make change happen. Thank you.